Battlefield 2042 needs some work. That was the title of my video yesterday. Whether it's improving performance or implementing features that would improve the experience, there's a lot that needs to be done. And I think in a very short space of time as well, if the DICE team wants to convince current players that they're listening to feedback. We've had one patch already that dropped the day before global launch. What many people didn't realize was actually the day one patch. And it helped eliminate some of the server performance issues, which admittedly did do some good work, but much more is needed. Based on some trawling through social media, I found some responses from developers talking to players and community members about things that need addressing, and it makes for some pretty good reading. Today, I'm going to compile a list of those issues mentioned together and bring you the response so that you've got a better understanding of what DICE is doing to improve the game at this early stage and what their priorities appear to be. There is no doubt that the launch of this Battlefield game has been very disappointing to say the least with the amount of issues that are still present in the game. I waited for the day one patch in hopes that that would solve some of the issues we were seeing during early access. And while it did fix a couple of the points, unfortunately its impact wasn't really that profound and the game that we were playing in that early access period is largely the same one that was available on worldwide launch. Again, quite disappointing. So now that the game is sitting in the state that DICE and EA chose to release it in, we can start to highlight issues and problems that need sorting out for this game. So first up, let's talk about weapon balance and the presence of some rather severe bullet spread or bloom in Battlefield 2042. This is something that players picked up on pretty quickly during early access, both in the main all-out warfare game modes and in Battlefield Portal as well. And to quickly explain, bullet spread is a feature where when you're continuously firing, it's sort of like pushing your bullets out from where you're aiming. If you were to stop shooting, the spread would then reset back down to its base level. When you start shooting again, it's likely that those first few bullets would hit their target. But over time, there's more and more spread as you keep firing your gun. It's used as like a balancing mechanic. And apparently, it's been present in all past Battlefield titles, as I was told the other day, including Battlefield 5. I'd forgotten, it seems. The most up-to-date information that we have on the issue for 2042 is that the spread mechanic isn't working as it should and it's negatively affecting some weapons more than others. So if you're seeing lots of people killing you with the PP29 or the PBX SMG, those don't appear to be having the issue, which is why people are using them. Most ARs and light machine guns, however, are suffering and in Portal, almost all weapons are affected, especially when you are going from sprinting to immediately firing your gun. You'll see some clips on Reddit and social media where the bullets are literally going around the target that you're shooting at. The effect is far too strong and it appears to be bugged. According to Drunksy, one of the developers at DICE, this issue has now been identified. Changes have been made on their side and it's just a matter of getting those changes into one of the future patches that the game is due to receive. Over the next 30 days, two patches are dropping to help shore up Battlefield 2042 by fixing issues and hopefully implementing some features that have gone missing from the past few Battlefield games. An issue like overreacting weapon spread to me is one that needs to be fixed as quickly as possible because it affects the thing that you use 95% of the time in a Battlefield game and that is the weapon that you're holding in your hand and at the moment because it's affecting some weapons more than others it's really limiting your choice and the fact that Battlefield 2042 only has 22 launch weapons, there are only about 10 or so that are worth using at the moment because they're not being hit by this spread issue. So hopefully the team can get a fix out on this one in one of those two upcoming patches. I think this has to be a top priority for them. Next, we're going to go ahead and talk about a couple of features that were in previous Battlefield games and were actually really helpful but currently aren't available in Battlefield 2042. The first is visibility of nearby medics and UI notifications to tell you that a medic is on the way when you're in the revive state. Now Battlefield 1 first introduced this and it then carried over into Battlefield 5 and it's a really helpful feature as a player dead on the ground because it's cool. Now you know if you can skip to spawn if there aren't any medics around you or if there's a medic on their way over and you can hold on and they will revive you. That is a feature that is coming back in the future, according to Drunksy, which is good news. And then something that I mentioned in my video yesterday, the ability to customize the look and feel of Battlefield 2042's UI, changing the size of certain objects, the opacity, overall scale, etc. This is something that Battlefield games have had since Battlefield 4. 
According to Drunksy, the team is currently working to add options into the menu for these things, and when answering a question that focused around the opacity of icons, there was no mention of any scaling or anything like that, so remains to be seen if that will be added at the same time, but really any advancements in the realm of decluttering the UI, to me, those are welcome additions. I like to scale my HUD down overall, but then keep the minimap a little bit larger so that I can use the information that it has more effectively. And I like to reduce the opacity of pretty much all friendly or neutral icons in the game, but keep enemy icons at 100% opacity, so they are clearly visible on the screen. So if we're able to start tweaking with that stuff soon, that will be a good step forward. Then we have a few official confirmations of changes from the Battlefield Direct communication account on Twitter. If you're not following this one, by the way, you absolutely should be. It is a new account, but it's been a good source of information since the early access launch. It's run by DICE and the EA team, so it's an official one. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's been directly communicating with the community and players and was the source of information on the rubber banding being fixed and Dozer's shield being disabled and fixed and a few other things. So first up, we have Soldier Revives on the menu. You might have noticed that often, if a player is too close to an object, like a wall or a car or something, and they're rolling around on the ground with the revive icon above their head, you go over there to revive them, and you're not able to do it. The prompt doesn't come up, you can't revive them. The team has identified the cause of that, and a fix is on the way, which is good. Then for the other revive issue, where you're actually stuck in the revive state, and there's like zero on the countdown timer, the team thinks they've identified a server-side fix that they can deploy that will stop that from happening. This may well mean that it can be fixed without a patch, which would be good news. But if that isn't possible, they've lined up a proper fix that, they, that can be included in one of the upcoming patches as well. A problem with missing loadouts on the spawn screen has now got a fix ready to be deployed in a future update. This means you won't have to leave the server and join back in to see your loadouts. Obviously, that's quite annoying because you can't play the game. And then just to reiterate something that I did speak about yesterday, a nerf to the hovercrafts. It will be re-equipped with lighter armor, overall vehicle health will be lowered, and the weaponry that it has access to will be tuned down to stop it being such a mobile powerhouse. And the little bird will also have some nerfs applied to its weaponry as well, since it's very powerful at the moment. Now, back to other bugs and issues identified from social media and Reddit. Another one acknowledged by Drunksy here, right now when you enter a vehicle, various cooldown timers for your gadgets will stop cooling down and they will get stuck in the position that you were in as an infantry soldier. The cooldown then continues when you leave the vehicle, so not very helpful. This could be quite annoying if you're someone who likes running the healing crate or the ammo crate and then you drop out of a vehicle to provide some support to infantry on the grounds and you can't drop the heals because the cooldown was stuck whilst you were in the vehicle and you've got to wait a little bit longer. Drunksy has said that this is a bug, and no doubt it will be fixed in an upcoming patch, although Mo mentioned that a fix has already been applied for it, so probably just identified quite recently. A fix for the stuck in crouch issue is going to be applied at the same time as the one where you're stuck in the revive state, with the timer stuck on zero. The two issues appear to be connected in some way, and they're going to be fixed together. Some of you might have experienced the issue where when you're being shot at by a helicopter as a soldier, you're trying to run away and then with every round that hits the ground or applies damage to you, you aren't able to keep moving consistently. You keep getting stuck and it's like running through quicksand. You, can't, you just can't move properly. This seems to happen when it's like rockets or cannons that are being fired at you and it's really quite annoying as an infantry soldier that you can't escape the massive death machine in the sky. So according to Peter Vesti, a developer at DICE, the issue was noted to the team a couple of days ago. They're now aware of the problem. Unlikely at this point that there's a fix in place because it's only been a couple of days, but the fact it's been highlighted is a good thing. The bug with the 6x scope on sniper rifles where the correct magnification isn't displayed and instead you get no zoom at all, that's been identified and fixed. And according to Drunksy, it's now just a matter of time until it makes it into a patch for the game. Complaints of poor hit registration are also being looked into. There are actually various issues here that I found whilst I've been playing, including just not being able to deal damage when you should be. Hit markers not displaying when you hit enemies, but then getting the kill confirmation. That's a really jarring experience. Hit markers appearing when you hit dead bodies of both friendly and enemy soldiers with explosives. Again, really quite confusing. And a few more as well. Aim assist for controller players is being looked into, but there isn't anything specific that DICE can comment on at the moment, likely still being investigated or fixed. 
micro rubber banding some players are experiencing whilst moving around to sort of jittering backwards and forwards in really short bursts not the larger ones that we saw like the server rubber banding but just much smaller ones that will, will, will affect your movement drunksy has said that that's got something to do with animations in the game right now and that will be fixed not being able to shoot players through the front windows of the hovercraft with various weapons was identified a few days ago that was a massive conflict against the transport trucks where you could shoot through the front window those were a good experience fighting against. The hovercrafts have just been a plague on this game for the last week or so. But that information has now filtered through to DICE and a fix has been made and will be added to a future patch. And then with regard to weapon attachments, there appear to be issues with the mo at the moment with some of them not actually doing what they say they do in the menus when you pick them. There is a fix in the works for this, but it might explain why some of you feel like the attachments don't do anything. It's probably because they haven't been doing anything. There are for sure a bunch of other issues that I could talk about here, but these are the ones that I picked out on social media that got replies from DICE developers and the official accounts. So I thought it was relevant to bring them to you and it gives you a better idea of where the team is at in fixing this game at the moment. There are still lots of other problems that the team needs to sort out. And I think the only way they're going to regain any kind of trust with players at the moment is if they continue to provide updates that are going to bring quality of life improvements to this game and implement all of the features that players have come to expect from a Battlefield game that currently aren't in the game at all. This is a good first step, looking at a lot of the changes and fixes. DICE is going in the right direction, but it's still disappointing that these things weren't fixed before the launch because some of them are quite obvious and they are fundamental to the game working properly all of the time. So it would have been great if the game had launched with all of these things working, but that's not where we are. Thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next one.